on, a little easier on that side, right? If I, mm -hmm. if I just made a click, now if I keep doing it, there's Nothing. no more there's no more clicking, but it doesn't mean the joint's not moving. There we go. If the upper neck is balanced. It's like Star Wars, brings balance to the force. <laughs> <laughs> brings balance to the spine. Don't feel like you have to hold back. All right. Just letting you know. All right, well, <laughs> you heard him. Tell me a little bit about um, yourself and what you've gone through. Just briefly, I know you said one injury where you were in Iraq. Was it Af Iraq or Afghanistan? Uh, Iraq, Iraq. Iraq. And then that... Uh, well, the, the, the impact with the, the main gun on the tank happened yes. in Germany back in the 80s. Okay. So it was just a training exercise. Um, uh, the, uh, the hatch on the driver's hatch is open. Right. You're riding up out of the, the seat. And as we went through a depression, um, they were trying to maneuver the gun tube to yes. keep it from hitting, uh, impacting the ground. And yeah. when we came back out of the depression, that gun tube wound up coming down on the top of my head, forcing me to bend over. And of course, there's no room to move. You're, you're coming through how a far, hatch. How far do you remember bending down? Is your chin? Uh, my hit? chin came down to about here. It probably did, yeah. Yeah, down to about here. And it, it was not leaning like this. It was literally doubling over on the back. Amazing you didn't break. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, was, I was all of 18, so I think rather flexible. Um, that could have just been it right there. I mean, the the level of stress that puts on the joints in your back, mm -hmm. first of all, they, they separate when you flex, so you can dislocate a vertebrae, you can break a vertebrae doing mm -hmm. that. Um, obviously, when you have a trauma of that severity, your body's gonna guard. Mm -hmm. And I noticed you have your just middle back, lower back stiffness, yeah. <laughs> Your body's yeah. gonna try to. Uh, after that, after that occasion is when I uh, make the joke that the Rice Krispie Brothers moved into my spine because everything since then has been massive, just popping and clicking. Um, if I don't crack my neck frequently, oh. I get nausea. I'll get uh, a sort of a tense headache at the base of the neck, uh, the base of the skull. Um, How long have you known that going on? The headaches and the for. 20 something since, years since the thing the collision 20, with the 30 years yeah yeah that's that's been going on pretty much since then and then that high speed car accident or you the high speed about? car accident was 2003 i was driving a tractor trailer and yeah. there was a gentleman being pursued by uh, two uh, uh, police officers at about three o'clock in the morning and they had him up uh, according to their dash cams they had him up to 170 i think it was 174 75 miles an hour um, and i was doing about 70 he apparently decided he wasn't going to get away and uh, decided to run headlong into my vehicle. Wow. So that, uh, yeah, uh, I went 265 feet without a front axle after had, having it sheared off. Um, did that, how did that, how did any new symptoms appear after that accident? Um, I didn't get any medical treatment at the time. The company I worked for wasn't really interested in, in about, they were more interested in the condition of the, the load and that sort right. of thing. Um, uh, just that day I had a bit of a headache. The following day I was stiff as a board. Right. Massive headache. Um, okay. Uh, and, and of course, you know, just go back to work type thing. When's any imaging taken at all throughout this whole period? Uh, those first two ins? No, no, nothing. Has any imaging been taken ever? I did see a chiropractor after the uh, after that incident. Yeah. Um, uh, a chiropractor after that incident, um, but it was. No curiosity to take a picture? Um, I think he may have taken an x-ray at one point, okay. uh, and that was about it. Uh, but no MRIs back in the day. Nothing um, was dislocated? He didn't say anything huge, like things were dislocated? He started, he started to adjust. Uh, they, they outsourced me to some physical therapy, trying to get this uh, the right shoulder, which had dropped after the, uh, okay. the vehicle accident. Sure. Um, Go ahead and stand up for me. Look sure, at your sure. posture. Many times the shoulder is really ahead. So what I'm seeing here is that what, what happens is when you're, if you can follow me, You'll have an injury to the right side of your neck. Mm -hmm. Your head will tilt to the left, and if you walk around with your head tilted, it makes you dizzy. So what happens is you drop the right shoulder. Does that make sense? We call it a writing mm -hmm. reflex. Your eyes have to be on the horizon. If you walk with your eyes unlevel, you'll you talk about vertigo. That's probably part of what's going on. Is your body's trying to have the head tilted. You get you know, and, they, and your body's trying to adapt mm -hmm. to get your eyes level because if you walk around with your head tilted, it'll be dizzy. You have 24 vertebrae inside your spinal column. I want all the vertebrae to be aging evenly. Part of your desire to pop your neck is, there's a thing called a joint capsule, mm -hmm. where the joints connect together, there's a fluid capsule. When you have injury to the joint, the body tries to get the weight off the joint, the joint swells, mm -hmm. air bubbles build up in that joint, which causes pressure, tension, you feel stiff, you feel like you just gotta mm -hmm. uh, release it. You, you crack your own neck, you pop the air bubble out, you get a little bit of momentary relief, mm -hmm. then the air bubbles build back up again, you gotta do it again. 
And over a repetitive cycle, if you keep popping your own neck, first of all, it's highly likely that you're only popping the lower neck mm -hmm. and the upper neck is staying tight. And that's part of the reason why you can pop it is that if your upper neck was moving, you wouldn't be able to pop your lower neck. You have to have one part of your neck stiff so that you can as a lever, right. as a lever to pop the, very good. Let the jaw relax, the jaw relax. Deep breath in, exhale. Deep breath in, exhale. Chin down, exhale. Very good, stand All right, reasonable level of movement. I, I expect perfection, but <laughs> I'll, I would give that a pass rating. It wasn't as tight as I expected your back to be. Put your hands on your belly, perfect. I'm gonna breathe and then look over this shoulder a little bit. Exhale. There we go. And then take a deep breath in. Exhale. Let's go other side for me. Mm -hmm. All right. Deep breath in. Exhale. Very good. Uh -huh. Good. Exhale. All right. A little easier on that side. Yeah, face up. Face up for me. So the right is stuck and you're abusing the left there. Okay. Right hip was, uh. and so, so aren't you happy Ed, it moved? Aren't you happy? No, because it didn't move evenly. Do you understand? Yeah. I want both sides of the drawer. So just because things popped isn't, wait. The popping, the popping isn't the solution, it's just. It's balance. Yeah. Do you understand? I want, even if there's no air bubbles, sometimes you'll have a joint and it'll be swollen, but it'll still move mm. or it'll be, there'll be no air bubbles and the joint moves and there's no click. It doesn't mean that it wasn't a good adjustment. It's more about the tactile feel of it. Uh, we definitely overplay as chiropractors the click, but what I want is your back to feel supple. And many times, you know, it can be stiff and it doesn't make a sound, or it can be, you know, already moving too much, just like a joint in your hand, right? If I, mm -hmm. if I just made a click, now if I keep doing it, there's Nothing. no more. There's no more clicking, but it doesn't mean the joint's not moving, right. right? So a joint can be hypermobile, and there'll be no air bubbles in the joint, and it doesn't click. The goal of the adjustment isn't to see how many pops I can get in your spine. The goal is to balance your spine. Yeah. So on the top bone here, feel this is your atlas. This this is the wing. I can feel it real easily on the right, and it's sunken in there. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So when I have your head straight to your torso your bone is sticking out to the right side. Mm -hmm. your, your head is straight to your chest, but the bones are unlevel in your neck. Mm -hmm. Now, if I tilt you about, let's see here, right about, right there. Right there, the bones are level. <laughs> Do you understand? That's fairly significant. I got the bones level in your neck now. I got even pressure on his atlas, but I got you tilted 30 degrees to the right. Like, like the handlebar on the tank. I, mm -hmm. I had to turn the handlebars 30 degrees to get the tire straight. Mm -hmm. So what will happen is it's going to be left lower abuse because essentially you're in right avoidance, left overstressing. Does that make sense? So it'll be yes. left arm, left shoulder blade is where you're going to be. It's like you put food in your mouth and you're only chewing on the left side. Mm. And so naturally the teeth on the left side are going to age at a faster rate because they're the ones being stressed. Mm. While the other teeth are... Well, the teeth on your left are disease. No, they're just worn out. They're the ones that you chew on all the time. It's not, it has nothing to do with the disease. It's, a, it's an alignment issue. I've noticed if I'm driving long distances, I have to sit perfectly straight up in the seat, unlike everybody else who likes to recline a little bit. What do you feel if you don't? Um, pain. Where? <laughs> Where? Um, pain starts, I would say, upper back, like right about shoulder blade level. In and between then also, here? In between yeah, here? Yeah. yeah. And then also at the lower back as well, all right. like so, right at the tailbone. So that's... So, so What's I sort of sit straight as a post. Right. So what that does is it keeps the inflammation out of your lower neck. When you bend forward, the joint, you're getting a joint inflammation that refers pain to between the shoulder blades. It, anything going down the arms? Uh, occasionally, yeah. yeah. Numbness, tingling, pain, electrical? Um, uh, sort of electrical. How far down? Um, fingertips sometimes. Okay. So now that's, that's a disc injury. So we have, when's the last time you felt that? Um, it's sporadic, a um, couple months back, but sometimes I won't notice anything there for quite some time, like you know, what, what months I'm saying, or a year. What, you're, what I'm saying is you have a disc injury and then you're able to adapt and retract. That's part of why you have the head tilt. It'll eventually, if we don't take care of your neck, it won't be retractable, meaning it'll just, it's just electrical all the time. I've noticed I have a habit of putting my uh, left hand 
mm-hmm. behind my head when I'm sitting. Like if I'm sitting in an office chair. To support it? I'll, no, not to support it. I'll just raise the hand up and, and just leave it there. Not so much to hold the head, but if I don't, for some reason, I feel uncomfortable sitting. I don't know if that makes sense to you or not. Do you think you're tucking your chin? To, do you think the hand's helping you? Or No, it's almost like just raising, just, it's raising the arm up is what's, what seems to be. Well, ready for this? <laughs> yeah. This is the same as this. <laughs> Biomechanically, there we go. Okay. do you understand? Yeah. When you raise your left arm up, it's the same as you tilting your head left. You're, in avo- that's in a, you're avoiding. What, okay. you're, what you've taught yourself is that as long as I do this, I'm not pinching anything on this. There's, there's a monster on the right side here <laughs> that I'm going to run into in a minute. And, you know, it's like I'm opening up a, a door and, you know, hey, how you doing? <laughs> oh! There we go. All right. You all right? Yep. How'd I feel? Loud. Loud. <laughs> Loudness of the adjustment can also indicate the level of distance the bone moved. I'm going to use the word for the first time today. Subluxation is a common chiropractic word that mm. was trying to, dis, trying to denote that the bone wasn't dislocated, which is luxated. It's sub it's less than a dislocation, so it's subluxated. Mm-hmm. The distance can only be permanently changed through stretching. 102 years, chiropractors taught that adjustments change posture, and as much as I wish it to be true, it's not true. We have to stretch in the same way that your posture got worse, it's the same way it's fixed. Mm-hmm. I got your head, there we go, there we go. Notice the sound wasn't as loud right. on that side. It was loud, but it wasn't it didn't have that uh, right that crunch. Yeah, that, that loud pop to it, that loud crack. That's what I'm feeling when I feel your neck. You're in. The right side is expanded open, so the distance was larger on the right. You know, I haven't really noticed the knot there until you started rubbing on it. Yeah. Now it's rather obvious. Yes. Yeah. Because you've been avoidance. To be honest, to be frank, <laughs> to be frank, <laughs> I expected a lot more guarding. Uh, so I think we got. I think you're my miracle child. I don't know. It should be way stiffer than this. I've had guys, I had a guy fall off a roof, uh, landed flat on his back when he was a kid. Mm-hmm. And now he was older than you, maybe in his 60s, and nothing moved. Do you understand? I mean, mm-hmm. it had been 50 years since he had been adjusted. And perhaps if you waited another 10, 20 years, somebody might try to adjust you and just nothing happens. Well, <laughs> The body just completely fuses itself. I mentioned my wife is Thai and on our trips to Thailand I'll frequently get uh, some uh, deep tissue. What they call Thai, uh, traditional Thai massage which yes. is more like assisted yoga. Yes. Mm-hmm. So for example when you did the, the leg, the, the bent leg over side, yes. that's, that's something that they do frequently during the, the, the Keep course. Keep you moving. The, yeah. Excellent. So uh, first time I had that done I made the comment walking out that I felt 15 years younger. The simple the simple way to put it is motion is lotion, which is <laughs> that movement keeps everything lubricated. The joints inside stay like oil, you understand, to a bearing in an engine. Mm-hmm. It helps everything stay cool and stay functioning. When things don't move, there's a crystal, a plaque, rigidity that forms in joints that don't move. And if something doesn't move, it generally feels good. So it's, <laughs> it's deceiving until I start going in there and, like I said, on that right side, Ed, I haven't felt that before, mm. right? See, you know, this is actually softer. Do you feel the difference? This is actually there's not a huge lump on the left yes. side like you have. I mean, right it's, there. It's a Frankenstein bolt, right there. You got it. And it's okay. I get to be the big <laughs> first one to show you this. It's. Yep. There's an injury that he had right here, and it healed with a. And it actually clicks a little bit. Yep. Feel that? It's almost like a couple little mm-hmm. knots in there, kind of gristly. Crunch. There yep. it is, right there, right. Mm-hmm. Yep. But yeah, right there. Mm. There you go. Left head tilt. It's going to cause left lower neck abuse, left high shoulder. Left middle stiffness, right lower abuse, left high, left hip high. They're dominoes, they're postural dominoes, or what we call compensations. Ultimately, the president of the United States is your upper neck. <laughs> That's the boss. And if the upper neck is balanced, it's like Star Wars, brings balance to the force, <laughs> brings balance to the spine. And so there's, it's not a equal, what do you want to say? Not all the vertebrae are equal. There's a lot more value to your upper neck 
than there is to T5. So you'll frequently hear about the atlas and axis because those top two bones, if they're out of alignment, you're, we're in trouble. The whole domino is gonna be offset now. You're gonna see me spending a disproportionate amount of time right here because we have to push this down. This is the, you know, say the counter coup. This happens as a result of the head tilt. So working on this independently without fixing that would be silly. Yeah. Does that make sense? You'll never get these, you can sit here and rub these ribs for <laughs> decades. You'll never, cha you'll never change it because it's just a result of your head tilted left. The, the, and then subsequent probably loss of arch in the neck, which is what's causing your head to go two inches forward. Interestingly enough, the area you're in right now is well, the shoulder blade region is where I get a lot of muscle yeah. spasm. Correct, yeah, the, the bones are, this is, the ribs are out of place here, but it's because of the head tilt. Mm -hmm. So the spasms are happening because when the ribs go out of position, the ligaments are under stress. The ligaments under stress cause muscle tightness to, because, because the muscles can provide stability because the ligament's losing its stability. Do you follow me? The, it's comp the muscle tightness is not the problem. It's happening because the alignment's incorrect. But you're right, yeah, you're gonna get spasms in here for sure. <laughs> this is a result of the alignment not being proper. We call it thoracic outlet syndrome. That's what's part of what's pinching the hands and numbness in your left hand, tingling electrical, is pressure on the nerves here. I found it interesting when you pointed to the uh, the lower when you touched the lower right side, saying in lower yes. right back abuse. Yes. That was almost exactly the spot where I had pain. Yes. Yeah, I told you. We're <laughs> left side, left. It's it's like a. I mean, I was reading an algebra. It's it's just it's like reading a book. You just you know where the it becomes predictable. Mm. You know, my dentist knew where my teeth were going to wear out when I was twelve. He said this overbite causes this problem mm. at thirty, and so we're going to spend two years in a lot of pain, moving your teeth for the health of your teeth later on. Right. And we do this all the time with our teeth and nobody questions anything. The dentist, never, the orthodontist never said he believed this. He never said he thought this was going to happen. He said, we know this. We know that these alignments cause these problems. It's the exact same thing with the back. If this is stiff and elevated, you're going to abuse the opposite lower. Nerves don't talk to you until they're having a temper tantrum. Mm. They don't give you any warning. They're like Brutus, right? Julius Caesar thought he was his best friend, right? And then tell, it to Brutus. Yep, knife in the back, yep. <laughs> right in the back, and you're like, I thought you were my friend. <laughs> you know, that's a nerve. Muscles and ligaments are, you know, they'll talk to you. They're like, like a dog. You, know, you can tell their emotions more easily. Um, they don't, they're not passive aggressive like nerves are. They're just, they, I was fine, I was fine, I was fine, I can't move. Mm. <laughs> That's a nerve. They don't talk to us the same way. Um, they don't regenerate, which makes, let me be more specific, peripheral nerves can have some capacity for regeneration. The spinal cord and brain do not regenerate. So I put things in different categories of importance. The spinal cord or anything in your body that doesn't replace, does that make sense, mm -hmm. <laughs> is more valuable than things that do replace. We got to get all these ribs down right here. All of that. Is that scar tissue? It's the rib elevated. There is a level of scar tissue in here, yes. But I would say most of this is postural distortion. Yep, this is from the head tilt, and then you've healed in the wrong position. So you, your body founded, you know, found a new position to be in, and then it just stayed there. There's going to be a mark right here. The biggest mark is going to be on his left. I'm from really here. That sounds like here. a washboard. <laughs> yes, you got it. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's night and day from left to right here. Right there's where it starts. Right there. Down to here. I can hear that. Yes. Yeah. screw analogy that I'm talking about. This is all, so like an engine that runs at a higher RPM, it produces more exhaust. 
cellular exhaust is called lactic acid. Mm -hmm. When an area is very tight, the tightness prevents the lactic acid from being mobilized and bound to oxygen and removed from the tissue, which then causes pain in the area. The acidity irritates the nerve endings and to the point where you'll almost tell me where the mark will come out. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And oh yeah, I feel it. Yeah, there's something <laughs> right in here that's been bound up. So what you're saying is if the muscles are too tight, the lymphatic system can't move anything. <sighs> right. Well, it's the muscles are so tight that even the circulation has trouble getting in. Mm. So the, the muscles being tight is like getting water up to the 50th story of a building. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to have a strong pump to get it up that high. So the tightness makes it harder for the muscle in the artery. So the muscle, there's a muscle in the arteries that veins don't have, right? Veins are just two layers, arteries are three layers. There's a piece of meat in the middle between the tunica interna and externa. There's a thing called a tunica media, which is the muscle. That muscle in the artery is what controls blood pressure. So when the area is stiff, that muscle in the artery has a hard time pushing blood into these high pressure regions. Hmm. They're pressurized because of posture, because of this knot up here, ultimately, and then the destabilization of the joints, the tightening of the muscles is a compensatory tightness to try to back up, st stabilize the area. Yeah, this is nice and smooth over here. It's not nearly as much. I've had practitioners ask me, what do you think about trigger point therapy? And the correct answer to that question is trigger point shouldn't exist. Hmm. That's, that's it. No more talking. They exist because your posture is incorrect. Hmm. The alignment's not correct, you have tightness and spasms, you can your heads forward because of injury. So I treat the posture, trigger points don't exist. Hmm. You know, so I, don't, I, don't, I know I'm rubbing the trigger points right now, but I don't think of myself as treating trigger points. I'm softening your spine so we can get to stretching, which is going to be overarching and taking care of all of it in the first place. Ed, I appreciate what you're doing, but that's not the most pleasurable sensation I've ever had. <laughs> it doesn't mean stop. But go for the kill. It's fine. All right, fair enough. I have a high tolerance. All right. I don't want any of this. There, there is no normal tenderness in here. Ed, can't you push any harder, you little weenie man? That's what I want to hear. <laughs> you understand? Yep. Not, Ed, um, that's not very pleasurable. I'm not sure if I'm... <laughs> you got work to do then. If that hurts, you know, this is a joint here. There's nothing... This is what causes sciatica is part of this tissue being inflamed, getting the joint moving, which helps to wash the tissue. All right, there's the joint right there. Yeah. All has to be removed. I don't, I don't accept any of it. Don't feel like you have to hold back. All right. Just letting you know. All right, well, <laughs> you heard him. My father's, uh, he's the task sergeant, and one day you'll meet him. And, He'll be down in this level here. This is where my father goes. I try to wait till visit two or three. <laughs> <laughs> first, first visit, like gee whiz. Oh. Nobody's gone digging in a while, Ed. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Woo! That's that left side. That's that whole section right there. Yeah, see, I've seen on some of your videos where it blossoms up like that. I've noticed some people get very little, and then some people get. I can Some people, amount. who is this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go face down for me. Here we go, brother. I got you. It's okay. Uh -huh. Good. Here we go. Breathe. Uh -huh. Good. Breathe. You busted this right ankle pretty good? Um, broken? No. Or just busted it, just sprained it? A uh, number of times. Um, yeah, I can see it's just more puffy, a little more here than over here. Yeah, I, I actually got to the point where if it started to roll, I'd just let myself go down instead of trying to, uh, put that. It was easier to fall than it was to try to try to correct and stay upright, if you get what I mean. Uh-huh. So I found if it started to roll, just go down. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, one thing I figured out is I would much, much rather break a bone than have a soft tissue injury. Yeah.
yeah. Yeah, there are joints. There are joints in there. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Think about injuries, right? Um, I was about 13 and got hit by a car and a bike. Oh. Bounced off the windshield. Go ahead and tilt your head left a little bit for me. Tilt your head a little left. What in the world's going on here today? Guy's popping my ear. Tilt your head right a little bit for me. Right to the right, to the right. There we go. A little bit to the right. Yeah. Just curious, what's that connected to? <laughs> There's a lot of drain lines that drain your sinuses, that drain down the back of your ear. Mm -hmm. Part of it is releasing any adhesions, congestion, tension Makes around sense. the ear, affects the sinuses. Having your head forward creates tension in here, so we're trying to release any tension in the neck and behind the ear. Fair enough. Press, see if you can press the clay. <laughs> into the mold. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If your head will stay there, try to let it stay there, and then put your hand back on your belly or down by your side, and then you do 20 minutes. And this is how you mold. Now, as you progress through this, it might even become more difficult because your neck actually starts to do it properly because your head starts to sink into it. The first 10 times you do it, it might not feel difficult, or Ed, this is a joke, and then it mm -hmm. becomes difficult, and you're like, I thought I was getting better. Why is it getting harder? You're actually doing it properly as your neck becomes more malleable over the course of treatment. And this is the first step of bringing that curve back in your neck, postural change. It's like pushing a drawer in. Sometimes you gotta give a little wiggle yep. to get the drawer to slide in. This is the lumbar curve that your lower back should be in. It's supposed to be shaped like this? Yes. Yeah, it's definitely not shaped like this. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, it's, it's a straight mold that I'm asking yeah, to be I a curved mold. I mean, I can just, oof. Right. Normally, if I felt this the type of sensation in the back, I would think I was injuring myself. Well. We have work to do. Yeah. This is actually home, but you've been so prodigal for so long that home no longer seems like home anymore. Mm. It seems like a foreign place, and this is where your spine will last the longest. So you notice I left your lower back alone. I didn't touch it. Mm -hmm. I worked above and below it. The image would help me understand how damaged, but like I said, it doesn't change my treatment because I don't touch the lower back regardless. I don't touch the areas that were involved with that pain. We worked on the glute area, mm -hmm. which takes stress off your lower back. We worked on your middle back area, which takes stress off your lower back. And then I'm going to start showing you how to get that arch back in your spine. Okay. Look straight forward. Look at you a little bit. Yeah. No, much better. Yeah. About an inch now. Yeah, just, just, just by pushing this in, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Your body starts to come back. Now we have to hold it for a longer period of time for it to last. Does that make sense? Right. That for it ultimately to be where you want to be, we have to like cast the mold. For 20 minutes and then you'll slowly want to start staying there so we overcorrect we take you here to make the middle where you want to be mm -hmm. okay the shoulder alignment it's got it's a little better but that's like I said we have to get I have to start teaching you even throughout your day you can take your thumb and just try to work on this. tilting your head to the right yeah just if you can just start gently does that make sense you have to right now I'm just finding the spot where it hurts the most yeah um, start, ooh, yeah, letting it be okay that you tilt to the right. It's not going to hurt you, but you're going to run into stuff over there. Yeah. Okay? And then the shoulders will level out when there's no longer the head tilt, which causes that riding reflex, and you'll see your shoulder leveling out just by starting to confront that right upper part of your neck. Hmm. All right. Very good. Excellent. Thanks for Thank dropping you. in. Yes, sir. Thank you.